What's going on everyone, it's Justin here and today I've got an unboxing and review of the brand new iMac 24 inch for 2021. And not only is this the first time Apple has redesigned the iMac in quite a while, but it comes in seven different colors in a white bezel and all of them are on screen here. So you can let me know down in the comment section below as to which one is your favorite color. Drop a like on this video for the early coverage and also subscribe to the channel if you guys wanna see more videos of Apple products as soon as they come out. So as you guys might know, last year Apple started putting their own silicon in computers for the very first time. It started with the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro and this year they announced the iPad as well as the new iMac which utilizes Apple's own silicon and is available in either 8 or 16 gigs of unified memory. This product is probably the one that I'm most excited about from the recent spring event because I've been wanting to edit on an all-in-one Apple computer that has the M1 chip as well as a built-in display for quite a while. Of course, we are expecting the Pro models to come out later this year, but for now, we have this one. It comes in a lot of fun colors, and I feel like for any like family computer or productivity machine, this is gonna perform extremely well. So today is May 12th, we're gonna unbox this product right now and I'm gonna use it for a few days for video editing and my general productivity work, transferring everything and using it as my daily computer. And in the end of this video, I'm going to give you like my first impressions and like a light review after using it for a few days. First off, the box right here has the iMac and as I mentioned, it has the white bezel. It also has a 1080p webcam, which has a lot of improvements in terms of video quality than what we saw before. There's also a relatively large chin on the bottom and another observation that you're going to see is that it doesn't have an Apple logo. The colors kind of go throughout the aluminum and blend into the back with the backside having more contrast. So let's take a look at the other side of the box as well. So taking a look at the backside as well, we got this in a blue color and I honestly would say out of the bunch, my favorite one is either the silver, the blue or the yellow. I'm pretty boring so I usually just like a black or white computer but I also think like the yellow and orange is a little bit interesting but honestly the blue is pretty cool as well and it kind of goes along with the blue iPhone that I use as my daily phone. So for starters you can go ahead and get this in two main configurations with customization options of course. The base one is $12.99 which I feel like for a product that comes with a 4.5k 24 inch display has Apple's M1 processor and 8 gigabytes of unified CPU and GPU memory it is actually a pretty good price point. The upgraded model comes in at a price of $14.99 and that not only gives you two additional USB type C ports but it also gives you the option to go up to 16 gigabytes of unified memory and the GPU and CPU is eight cores as opposed to the CPU being eight cores and the GPU being seven cores on the base model. So as you probably see the design of the back is very clean and simple. Uh, it just has like a nice solid look there's no grills or anything. Um, the speaker technology is also something that we're going to talk about. It is just 11.5 millimeters thin and in terms of volume significantly less than the previous generations because it is just like a nice flat slab and almost looks like a large iPad. So now let's go ahead and just like set this down and unbox it. So as we unbox this iMac, I'm going to talk about some of the color configurations that you have when it comes to making your choice. So for the base model of iMac starting at $12.99, you have four different choices of color including blue, green, red, and silver. When you go up to $1,499 and the upgraded model with the 8-core GPU as well, it adds the yellow, orange, and purple color choice as well. When it comes to some of the accessories though, you do have the choice as usual to go with either the mouse, the trackpad, or a mouse and trackpad. The price to get just a mouse is included, $50 for a trackpad, and $129 if you want both accessories. Personally, I'm someone who has gotten really used to an external mouse, and I'm not the biggest fan of the Magic Mouse, but the trackpad I feel like is a good option to have as well, and personally, I've been getting used to that a little bit more lately. As we open up the box, you do have the power cord that has the Ethernet port built in as well, and other than that, there's just the instruction manuals and nothing much else aside from the included cables. For those who do like a numeric keypad with their keyboard, there's actually a choice to do that as well and it's near the bottom of your options. You just have to click on change to another keyboard and it comes in at an additional price of $30. Personally, I don't really need that because I'm mainly using the keyboard for basic video editing, but I know a lot of people really do like that keypad and paired with Touch ID, it is the updated version as well. So now we've got everything out of the box, here's the iMac itself. And to be totally honest with you, 
It looks much smaller than I expected. I haven't had a 24 inch computer in quite a while and I can't remember the last time Apple did a 24 inch form factor, but I do feel like this is like the perfect medium size for a daily productivity computer. For a lot of people, 27 inches or even 32 is just too large, but just like the thinness and like the uniform look, I'm excited to take this kind of cover off and see this iMac for the first time. But let's just peel this off right here. And it seems like there's another layer of plastic as well. It's a nice touch there. They've got a nice protective, um, protective film on it. And the last thing we have here is just the protective film on the front, so. And there you have it. So now that we've got all that plastic off, the first thing that I notice is that there's actually a single glass piece that goes from the top to bottom. I originally thought that the bottom was like a metal finish and like the light finish that we see right here on the previous generation IMAX, but it is actually all glass and it just has like a color finish underneath. On the side here, you can see it is just like a nice one piece design, super thin. There's actually a lot of microphones throughout and the speaker technology is also an area that Apple put a lot of focus on, similar to what they've done on the MacBooks and their headphones lately. Turning it over to the back, it is also very minimal. You have your power button on one side as well as your USB and Thunderbolt ports. And on the bottom, there is the speaker grill. So when it comes to specs, just for reference of what we're gonna be talking about in this video, this right here is the upgraded model. It has a 16 gigabyte unified memory with 512 gigs of internal storage. It also has all the additional ports and the gigabit ethernet. And the display specs on this computer is a 4.5K display that is 24 inches with a 500 nit brightness and a P3 wide color gamut. There is also True Tone for a comfortable viewing experience and also a 1080p webcam that is enhanced by the M1 image signal processor to reduce noise, improve dynamic range and improve auto exposure and white balance, which for people who do a lot of conference calls is going to be an area that you're really going to notice compared to the 720p webcam that we've seen quite often up until last year's iMac. So when it comes to some of the other things that are included in the box, there is a matching colored keyboard in the blue finish. It also has Touch ID built in, which is a great touch. And generally speaking, it has like this nice rounded off finish and it feels very light as well. But if you guys are used to Apple keyboards, this is pretty much the same as what you're familiar with. Some of the other stuff that are also included is a braided cable. Uh, Apple does like to include this in their computers and it is a lightning cord to be able to charge either your phone or your keyboard, which is the main intention of it. Um, in addition to that, there's also the power cord itself, which is once again braided and it also matches the color of the iMac that you purchased. This kind of connector does look a little bit different from what I've seen in the past and it does seem like it is easy to plug and unplug if you want to take this around with you um, to like different offices and whatever. I'm not sure how many people actually do that, but once again, it is still very stylish. And on the other end, there's also a functionality piece as well, where the ethernet port is built into the power cord. This is something that I really like because a lot of times your router is like inside the cabinet or underneath the desk and just in an area that isn't exactly attractive. So if you're able to save one cable from going through the entire setup and instead have it plugged in under the desk or behind it, that is always nice. So I really like this touch that Apple has done. I'm gonna go ahead and set this up. I'm gonna film the process and I'm going to use it for a few days before coming back with my general review after my first impressions of using it as my daily computer. So after having my first five days with the iMac Pro 24 inch, what are my opinions and who do I think it's for? So researchers on Apple's website, they compare it to the specs of the 21 and a half inch and how it delivers up to 85% better CPU performance and double for graphics. And that is thanks to the M1 chip that is inside. And I think the craziest thing with this release of Apple products is that the iPad and a desktop Apple computer that is fully capable of doing 4K and 5K video editing 
has the exact same main processor. So for anyone who's looking for a replacement to their 21 and a half inch iMac, this right here is the perfect option. In terms of general performance, I really enjoyed it. I mean, we're using Final Cut Pro 10, editing the video that you're watching right now. And for the most part, it was able to handle things very well. It was able to run smoothly, you're able to scrub through, and occasionally when you really had everything running, it may have crashed once or twice over the span of a week. But generally speaking, any productivity task that you throw at it is able to do very nicely. So when it comes to the thermals, comparing the base model to the upgraded model, the base one has one fan and also one heatsink. Whereas the upgraded model that has the eight core CPU and GPU compared to seven core GPU has two fans and also a heatsink. I don't have the base model with me, but if you are planning to do more intensive tasks, then inevitably the upgraded model is gonna be the one that you want to get. And it also gives you two additional USB type C ports. The base model comes in at a price of $12.99, which I think is a really good deal and very attainable as a general general family computer and also for like students or kids that are learning online. When it comes to doing FaceTime calls and stuff, I found the front facing camera's quality to also be very good. It is 1080p and on the hardware side of things, it is same as what you find on the 27 inch iMac from last year, which Apple has finally moved away from the 720p. And they also have a lot of different optimizations thanks to the M1 chip, which gives you better performance all around through white balance, auto exposure, face detection, image fusion, noise reduction, highlight details, and also local tone mapping. So here's a built-in camera test on the iMac 24 inch. And I've got to say it is really, really good. And if you're doing like conference calls for work or for school, it has great image quality. It is a 1080p resolution, which is the improved sensor that we saw on some of the iMacs last year. But generally speaking, I think it just has like a good amount of processing when it comes to the image itself. That is all thanks to the ISP on the M1 chip. And when I compare it to like the MacBook Air and stuff, I definitely noticed that the image quality, even in a backlit situation, which usually isn't favorable for conference calls, looked very good. There's also a huge focus on audio with the studio quality microphones and the speaker quality is also very good as well. There's Dolby Atmos support, but it did have like a nice spatial feel to it. And when playing music or supported movies, that is an area that you're going to notice Apple has done a very good job on. The 4.5K display at 24 inches, I think is a really good entry level size. 21 and a half inches is relatively small, but with the smaller bezels on the 24 inch model, the form factor generally speaking is one that is very manageable and actually quite portable as well. And I think I might actually bring this iMac with me when I travel, which sounds a little bit crazy, but because of the M1 chip and its ability to be able to edit videos at even high resolutions, I can definitely see this being a computer that I take on the go. Some of the things they also talk about though are the accessories and they've actually color matched every single thing that comes with this iMac. The power cable is matched. There's also a lightning cable that is braided and also the matching color of your entire system. And I also found the fingerprint sensor to be very fast and I think that's a nice touch as well. They also have the accessories including the trackpad, uh, which also has the same color accents as the iMac and the mouse also matches as well, but I feel like the mouse is definitely due for a redesign because it still does charge from the bottom. And personally, I'm not a huge fan of the Magic Mouse anymore, so I plan to use the trackpad. So yeah, like the general conclusion is that this computer is very, very powerful. Whether you're doing daily productivity tasks or like educational stuff, creating PowerPoints, documents, and just going about your day, everything that you want to throw at this is going to be able to handle that. But we want to push it to those limits and actually edit this entire video on it and it was able to do that no problem as well and that has me pretty impressed in terms of the price point that it comes in at at its base model and what it is able to deliver in terms of the way it looks i feel like i've got a bit of a mixed opinion i'm not usually a huge fan of colors and i feel like the apple logo is something that i'm used to seeing on the front but generally speaking it all looks very clean and if you like one of the colors that they make then having everything color coordinated is something that could really add some style and personality to a room even though I'm sure most people aren't gonna be taking this around with them everywhere, having a computer that is about 10 pounds makes it very possible to have a powerful Apple chip computer when you're traveling to do like video editing and stuff once that becomes a thing again. Because I personally don't love editing on a laptop because I feel like a lot of the physical limitations are attributed to the thermals. So after five days of use, I can see that so far I'm a huge fan of this iMac and it really has me excited for some of the pro models that Apple is going to release, hopefully sometime this year, but we don't really know yet because I feel like that is going to change the workflow entirely just after seeing potential of the M1 last year with the Mac mini and also the iMac with kind of a unified all-in-one system in such a thin form factor and coming in at under 10 pounds. I think that is all very impressive. 
But otherwise, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you let me know down in the comment section below what you like about the iMac, subscribe to the channel, and drop a like on this video, and I'll see you all in the next one.